Okay, so next let's start example three. So notice the instructions here just say integrate. So not all of these are going to be integration by parts problems, but I just want us to start getting some practice with looking at a problem or looking at an integral and deciding what technique would be appropriate here. And again, the thing that I really want to emphasize about integration by parts is that in these problems, you're looking for something like a u, which is a factor in the integral, really I should say of the integrand, that would become simpler if you could differentiate it. So we want to be taking a u and turning it into a du on the other side here of this equation. So that's where the strength of this integration by parts technique really lies. So let's look at 1a here. Here we have a product on the inside of our integral. That's a good sign that we might be wanting to use this integration by parts technique because in integration by parts, you're looking at u times a dv. So if you have a product of two things here, then you might want to use integration by parts. But the second thing is that we need to figure out whether either of these factors would become significantly nicer if we take a derivative of it. And notice that e to the negative x, that doesn't really become nicer when we take a derivative, but the algebraic part here does. So if I could take the derivative of x minus 1, that derivative would just be 1. And we like that. So this is going to be our u. And once you've chosen u, dv is chosen for you. dv is just the rest of it. So that means that u is equal to x minus 1, and that would make du equal to 1. Really, I should say dx. And we also know that dv is equal to e to the negative x dx. Now, this falls under the rule of thumb that I told you earlier, which is that if you have e to the something, and that something is a constant times x, then you can integrate it by just taking the same exponential, which is e to the minus x, and then dividing by that constant. In this case, that would be division by a negative 1. Or you could do a u substitution to, to figure out this integral. But either way, we should get that v is equal to a negative e to the negative x. Okay, so now we know u, v, du, and dv, so we can apply the formula. So we were starting with an integral of u, dv. The integration by parts formula tells us that this should be u times v, so that would be x minus 1 times a negative e to the negative x. That's u, v. And then minus the integral of v, du. So this would be the integral of v, du, which is just 1 times dx. Okay, and we can simplify this a little bit if we wanted to. So this would be x minus 1, maybe with a negative out front now, e to the minus x. So I can pull this negative sign from that first group of terms out front. And then similarly here, I can pull this minus sign outside of the integral to cancel with this minus sign. So that would just give us a plus the integral of e to the negative x dx. We've already seen the integral of e to the negative x. Remember that if you're integrating e to a constant times x, then this would again just be that exponential term divided by the constant. So that would be e to the negative x divided by 1. And because I just computed an antiderivative, I'll have a plus c here. So this would be a negative x uh, minus 1 times e to the negative x minus an e to the negative x for that second term here, and then plus a c. And I would be okay with you just writing this as your answer. It turns out that if you just distribute this minus sign here, then things clean up a little bit more, because if you distribute that minus sign, then you would get the second term is a positive e to the negative x, which would cancel with this negative e to the negative x. So altogether, this would clean up to be a negative x e to the negative x plus c. But I would be okay with either of these. So next, what I would recommend is that you try this one on your own, especially if you haven't been trying the others on your own, because I think the best thing for you to do to get used to this integration by parts formula is just to try a few of them. 
uh, and then you'll understand sort of mechanically what's going on. But here we want to choose the best value of u in this integral. So pause the video if you want to do this problem on your own first. But now I will choose my u. So I want u to be ln of x plus 1. Because that logarithm, it, it is true that both of these factors would become nicer if we took a derivative, but ln is the higher priority one. ln is the worst thing to integrate. We want to take a derivative of that so that we get things like powers of x's or at least algebraic functions. Okay, so I'm going to choose this as my u, and that means that the rest of this stuff is my dv. So... I'll start by just making this little table. u is ln of x plus 1. And that means that du is the derivative of that. The derivative of that would be 1 over x plus 1 times a dx. And now we know that dv is chosen for us. So this original integral is supposed to be written in the form u dv. So that means that dv would have to be the rest of that stuff, a 4x plus 2 times a dx. And therefore, v is going to be the integral of that. So if we integrate 4x plus 2, the integral of 4x would be a 2x squared, because we promote the power by 1 and divide by the new power. So that x would become an x squared, and then we would divide the 4 by 2. Similarly, if we integrate 2, that would become a 2x. So that's our value of v there. And now our original integral is equal to u times v minus the integral of v du by the integration by parts formula. So that would be ln of x plus 1 times v, which is 2x squared plus 2x. Okay, and then we have minus the integral of v du, so that would be a 2x squared plus 2x times a 1 over x plus 1 dx, because this is v and this is du. So this is what we have to integrate. Now, we could start looking for things like u substitutions that we could do in this integral. What I would recommend, though, is that you try cleaning up the integral as much as possible before you actually compute the integral. So in this case, notice that I can factor this expression because here these terms have a common factor of 2x. So if I factor out a 2x, and this would become a 2x times an x if I factored out from that first term, and then a plus 1 if I factored out a 2x from that second term. So that's just that first term split into those two factors. But then notice that we're multiplying an x plus 1 times a 1 over x plus 1. So these would actually cancel. And therefore, this would end up being ln of x plus 1 times v, which was 2x squared plus 2x, minus the integral of 2x dx. And now that integral will be much nicer to compute. So this will just be ln of x plus 1 times 2x squared plus 2x, minus the integral of 2x, or the antiderivative of 2x, is x squared. So this would be minus x squared. And then because we just took an antiderivative, we need a plus c. And that's our answer. So next, let's look at part C here. So here, I see two relevant factors. So I see an e to the x, and I see division by e to the x plus 1. Now, unfortunately, let's think about taking the derivative of those. The derivative of either of these would just be e to the x which isn't really any simpler than what we already have. So it looks to me like this integral is not going to actually be improved much by taking um, the derivative of either of its factors. So that suggests that maybe we don't want to be using integration by parts here. Um, but I also can't algebraically simplify this expression. 
So that really only leaves us with the other algebra, or sorry, the other integral technique that we've talked about, which is to try finding a U substitution. And remember, when you're looking for a U substitution, you're trying to find some part of your integral whose derivative appears elsewhere outside of the integral, and not outside of the integral, outside of that factor. So uh, I notice that if you look at e to the x plus 1, if you take the derivative of that, then you would get e to the x dx. So that suggests to me that maybe we just want to do an ordinary u substitution. So I'll say let u equal that bottom thing, e to the x plus 1. And then that would mean that du is equal to e to the x dx. But that means that the original integral that we had can be rewritten in terms of u now. That denominator is just u. And the rest of this, the e to the x dx, is du. So this would become a 1 over u times a du. In other words, I can think about factoring this stuff out. So I have, well, really factoring out the e to the x so that the numerator is just 1. And then that first term becomes a 1 over u. And the remaining stuff, this e to the x dx, is going to become my du. But now this is nice and easy to integrate. So this is ln of u plus c. That's not our final answer. We are done integrating, but our final answer needs to be in terms of the original integrals variable. So I just need to plug in the value of u here. u was e to the x plus 1. So I just plug that back in. And now I have my answer in terms of x. So we're done here. That is the antiderivative that we want. Um, but notice that in this case, even though this is in the integration by parts section, it is important to be able to just look at integrals and then try deciding which integral technique is going to help you most. And if it's not just an expression that can be simplified, so if the integrand is not simplifiable, then we really only have two techniques that we could try using. We have a U substitution, which is useful when the derivative of some part is outside of that factor like we had here. Uh, or we have this new technique, which is integration by parts. So I think the, the main thing that will help you to get used to deciding which tool to use is just to practice as much as you can. So I'll be posting a bunch of practice problems that you can use for integration by parts. Um, I won't be collecting homework over integration by parts, but I think just in terms of preparing for the final, it's important that you do a bunch of practice problems so that you know when this technique can be useful. All right, so that's it for this video. I think in our last video, 